All right, guys, when we last left off, the trophy truck had just become street legal and I was test driving it around on the streets. The gear still needed to be swapped because I had the 273s in there and the suspension still needed to be dialed in. Um, so I'm just gonna jump right in on the suspension and then we'll take care of those gears. Now this video, I simplified my editing just a little bit. Let me know what you guys think. If it's good, if it's not good, it's a little bit quicker to produce them this way. Uh, the other thing is uh, the kiddos. They're in the background a little bit more in this, making some noise and kind of wandering in and out of frame. Everybody's isolated on this compound, so that's just kind of how it is. I think it's cute, but I also think they're the cutest human beings on earth, so I don't know. If that annoys you, I guess just deal with it. Let's just jump right into that suspension. All right, guys, a couple things from the recent test drives. If you notice, the bump stop on this side is different than the one that's over here that was originally on there. This bump stop was ripped off. I mean, the, the old one. This is a replacement temporarily. It made contact with this pad. I don't know why it was smashed because it seemed to make clean contact right in the middle, but for one reason or another, it got ripped off. So this is the new one temporarily. Now, when that was ripped off, it allowed the tire to get a little bit closer to the fender here, give a little kiss and you can see how far up on the side it went. So I've got this tape here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that inner lip. While I'm at it, I decided to do the other side, of course, just to match them up. It, this side also made contact, but it was much less because it had a working bump stop. The other thing is uh, the travel has decreased dramatically. Well, not the travel, but the ride height has decreased after driving it around, it's settled in a little bit. So I'm going to uh, tension those rear coilovers a little bit more. I like where the front's at. Uh, there's a decent amount of down travel on both sides. It's probably 60 to 70% droop and about 30% compression. I may need to change that up a little bit, but I really do like the way it rides, so I don't think I'm gonna mess with anything too much yet. All right, guys, I wanna show you something on this rear suspension. You're able to see the bump stop there and then the axle. I'm gonna rock this baby just by my lonesome back here and I'm gonna show you that the suspension is soft enough to where I'm able to get that bump stop to make contact with the axle. And I shouldn't be able to do that. That should be something that only happens when I'm out there really beating on it. But here we go. So it's a little bit too soft. Now let me show you what that looks like from the coilover side. All right, here's the two coils on the rear coilovers. Now these are two different spring rates. The bottom one is much stiffer than the top one. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna rock it again and I want you to see how it's all compressing and then I'll show you how I'm going to try to make it a little bit stiffer. So here we go. Now when you've got these two spring rates, it effectively halves both of the springs. So right now, if I have both of them together, it's much softer than if I use these little retaining rings here and I thread them all the way down to the bottom where this black piece makes contact with them so that under like uh, maybe rough road conditions, the top nice soft spring kind of soaks up all those little bumps. But then this black piece makes contact with these two little rings here and then it's gonna stop this entire silver spring from compressing any further. And then the spring rate effectively doubles because it goes to the larger, heavier bottom spring. Hope that makes sense. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push these down now and then I'll try the same thing and show you what it looks like. All right, I don't know how well you can tell, but I've got the little, uh, Spacers here lined up here. They used to be up here. So now this plastic piece will make contact with those spacers pretty abruptly I'm gonna go shake it and we'll see if I can get it to ram down on those bump stops again All right, you ready bud? Here we go. Start bouncing All right, well, I was able to make contact, but I had to push a heck of a lot harder. So it sure seems like it's working. All right, guys, it's time to get these disgusting 273 gears out of here and put some 373s in. And somehow this became a family affair. Everybody's watching. What color, what color do you think the oil's gonna be, Ted? Dirty, yucky, red, black. All right, uh, I noticed that you- I'm gonna drink it. I noticed that your face has some damage on it. Do you want to tell the people how that happened? No. <laughs> okay, maybe later. Bull! What color is that? Red. Is it? You guys want to see what it looks like in there?
Ready? What do you think is going to be in there? Yeah. You think there's going to be little animals in there? Mm -hmm. You want to see it, Mom? I'm watching. The Amazing Puppet Show. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Whoa. Look at all those gears. That makes the wheel turn. So this little bolt here holds in this retaining pin. This retaining pin holds in the C-clips. C-clips hold in the axles. So first things first, I'm gonna take this out. Then I'll be able to pop that out. Then I'll be able to push the axles in. And then I'll be able to remove the C-clips. Then I can pull the axles out. And then I can get the gears out. Easy peasy, lizard squeezy. All right guys, I'm trying to show you how much play is in this rear end. It's a lot. It's, hard, it's tough to tell because there's there's a lot in the pinion and then there's a lot in the ring gear, but it's a, uh, it's a lot. There it is. About 20 to 30. So about twice what it's supposed to have. All right, check this out. It's not terrible. I mean, everything looks perfect inside. The wear patterns, the fluid looks great. Everything looks fine. This is totally, totally normal for 132,000 miles, but it's not ideal. That's not what we want. So you'll see in the end with the new gears what it ends up looking like. So I've got the, uh, I've got the retaining uh, screw, I've got the retaining bolt out. So what I'll do next is I'll actually get that pin out. There it goes. All right, guys, I'm not going to show you a full how to on how to swap out these gears, but I will show you the parts of it that are interesting. Uh, to get these axles out, remove the uh, rear brake calipers, remove the rear brake rotors, and then you've got the axle here, just push that sucker in. Let me show you what it looks like inside. So here's the side-by-side. -side. This is the side that I just pushed in. You can see the retaining clip and the splines are visible. On this side, they are not. So this clip just pulls right out. There's that. Now this clip is held in when you push it in by that bar that goes through the middle. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. Man, these things are beefy. 31 spline. So I did have to use a slide hammer to get this carrier out. I ended up using a bolt from a Fox Body Mustang subframe and then I used a Teflon washer in between that bolt and the carrier so that the carrier isn't uh, scored or damaged at all there. So I did have to use a puller to get this pinion flange off. Once in a while, they'll come out with just some light hammering on the uh, pinion. That was not the case on this. Actually, for this one, you see I put the nut back on there. I had to give it a pretty good beating. I had to whip out a little bit bigger sledge, but the camera cut off a little earlier. Here I am knocking out the races. Just uh, pretty straightforward. Here's a nice little punch, popping them both out from each side. Here I am installing uh, new races with a race installer. They went in pretty easy. So here I am removing the bearing from the old pinion. That's so that I can get to the shim that's underneath it. And then this is the new pinion. I'm using the wire wheel brush to get rid of the phosphoric coating that Ford Racing uses on their gears. Just makes the bearings install a little bit easier. So here I am installing the bearing with the shim underneath it. All right, guys, check out the difference in these two pinions. 
This is obviously the one that I removed. This is the one that I'm gonna be installing. The wear pattern on the one I removed is absolutely perfect. So we're hoping to match that up. That's why I put the same shim back underneath the uh, bearing there. Now, when they get numerically higher, the pinions get smaller and smaller. So this is 273, this is 373. Or yeah, 273, yeah, 373. So one more rotation, pretty cool. When you go from a 273 to a 373, imagine like a 529 or something crazy down there. You get to the point where these pinions are just so tiny and that's where the gears actually start to get weaker. Now these are Ford Racing gears. I like them because they are extremely strong and they're actually pretty reasonably priced, but they are known for having a pretty thick coating on them. So that's why I like to make sure that I do a nice fluid change and get them heated up, cooled down, heated up, cooled down, and go through a bunch of heat cycles to get this like scale off of here. And you will notice that the fluid that comes out looks a little bit different than the other brands. And then to get this top uh, bearing on, I do have to send it through my old wire wheel a few times to make sure that it's that that coating is gone so that I can slide that sucker in. All right, let's get uh, let's get this installed. The only thing that's reused here is a washer in between the seal and the bearing that's just used to retain the fluid up against that bearing. So I use the air gun to get the bearing up against that crush washer. That's where I'm at right now. See that little bit of movement? So now I need to crack that washer and start the process. And this is always difficult because as soon as the crush washer starts, uh, it kind of jumps that abrupt little motion where it actually phew, builds up enough tension to crush the washer. So you have to be really careful. Here's the old one. You see the large section in the middle, that's where it expands. So right now the bearings are right up against this. And so I just need to pinch it hard enough so that this starts to expand and then it'll hold it in that position uh, where I've got enough tension against it. This is always the most difficult part for me of doing a gear install. Uh, there's a video where I do new gears in a Ford 9 inch and I made that video because there wasn't any good 9 inch videos as far as I could tell. Uh, there's a couple good 8.8 .8 gear swap videos so that's why I'm not doing it in depth but on the 9 inches what I do is I actually will preload it with a um, press so I'll because the carrier because the pinion carrier on the 9 inch comes out on its own you take the pinion carrier assembly put it in the press and you can use the press to kind of break that crush washer to start the process, and then you can manually adjust it. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna have to do the whole thing by hand. It's a little bit difficult, but we'll get it done. All right, I had to get creative with a piece of angle iron using the drive shaft bolts so that I can lock this in place so that I can get a little bit more strength on this uh, little breaker bar so I can try and crush this crush washer. It's not doing its job. There it goes. This has got a ways to go. There it goes. If you over tighten this, you have to get a new crush washer. Take everything apart. And you're probably gonna mess up the bearings. So you gotta get a new bearing. So you need the whole kit. All right, the play is just about gone. There's just the slightest amount of play. where we're at. Alright, now I have to go get a different kind of torque wrench and then we'll see how much resistance. Basically you want to have 25 inch pounds of resistance on this pinion. Now that resistance comes from the two bearings inside. If the bearings are too loose obviously it starts to develop too much play and then you've got more motorcycles. Then you've got catastrophic failure. If they're too tight, then it overheats, and then you get catastrophic failure. So we're trying to, to walk a tightrope here of pressure without too much heat. So I'll go get the uh, torque wrench, and I'll show you guys how we do that. 
All right, this is the torque wrench that I use. It's a bit of a poor man's torque wrench. This is not ideal, obviously, for actual torquing where you want one that clicks or stops you or beeps along the way. This one tells you kind of in real time how much torque you're putting on it. So you can see it's not even registering one inch pound required to spin this around. So I do need to go ahead and tighten this nut down a little bit more, try and get into that 25 inch pound territory. All right guys, I got my father-in-law Jimbo over here. He's never done a gear swap. And so I, I was just asking him to spin the uh, pinion bearing here to see how much force is required. And he guessed it was about five inch pounds and it was exactly five inch pounds. So what I need to do, I'm still working on it. It's very, very, very slow. I'm basically having to attach my little contraption here and then I turn it maybe a 32nd of, an, of a rotation, maybe a 16th. I'll show you here how much this is it. So we, we were at five inch pounds right there. What is that? Maybe a 30 second of a turn. And then I remove this. And then get the other torque wrench set up and then spin this around a couple times. And it's crazy because you start spinning it and you're used to like uh, when you do spindles on a uh, axle or something and it spins super freely here is kind of the opposite it keeps getting tighter and tighter to the point where you're like that is way too tight something is very wrong so right here all right what do you think we're at Jimbo give it a spin well that's much more yep that's probably 20 we're still under 10 really yeah isn't that crazy wow. So watch, we'll try it again. I'll keep this filming for you guys so you can kind of see in real time how annoying gear changes can be. It's not that it's super annoying, it's just that it's back and forth. Hang on a second, bud. Hang on. Hang on, bud, hang on. So just that little tiny turn. Take everything apart. Get the torque wrench set back up. Probably not even going to be a ton. Ooh. Hang on a second, bud. Alright, feel where that's at. What do you think? I don't know, 15. Still at 10, we're wow. right at 10. Wow. Isn't it crazy? It takes so much more force than you'd think. All right, I'll keep tightening it, and then we'll get Jimbo's opinion on, uh, on how tight it is when it's done. Sometimes you'll see in the videos that this goes very quickly. It does not. We are just about at 20. Oh so tight this feels so wrong every time I do this I think this is way too tight I'm misunderstanding the instructions something is wrong but after 500 miles this becomes perfectly normal it's just a little bit too tight because the bearings do have to have that little bit of a breaking period once again that's why it's so important to let it get warm cold warm warm cool warm cool warm cool a whole bunch of times to get that bearing broken in without having too many shavings come out There's only one little nick, maybe two, in the manufacturing process. Otherwise, it's super clean. What a stupid nightmare that was.
Now, when I install these ring gears, I use the new bolts and I thread them in first just to make sure that all the threads are clean. I then clean off the ring gear, clean off the carrier, and then install them by hand. I put the first two bolts in without any thread locker just to help get that ring gear seated. Once it's seated, I then apply thread locker to all the other bolts and then use my electric uh, cordless impact to seat the ring gear and get all of the bolts in. And then I torque it down afterwards. All right, guys, let me show you how I torque the ring gear down. It has to go to 60 foot pounds. That's a little more than I can do, obviously, with just holding it and I'm by myself. So what I do, I put a couple of wood blocks on the bottom, seat clamps, a couple of 5.8 spare sockets that I've got, slide the bar through here to hold it, and then go ahead and crank her down and torque it to spec. Now you can do it without having to do it this way, but this is my little way. I know that uh, I see some guys who will just use this uh, little breaker bar here and uh, try and get it to hold on the bolt heads, but I can't do that. All right, guys, I'm gonna give it a shot and try and install the carrier with the factory shims. The cool thing about the factory shims is that they're one piece instead of being multiple pieces like the aftermarket ones. Not sure if it's gonna work. Uh, if I'm gonna have to end up moving the carrier at all, I'll have to change out the shims, but I always start off with the factory, factory settings. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but we've got about 11 thousandths in play. Maybe 12. All right, guys, I've got the backlash set right at 10 thousandths, and it's allowable between 6 and 10. So I'm right on the verge of not being allowed. So I, if this gear pattern is not fantastic, I'm gonna to have to pull this carrier back out. But these factory shims that I used were super tight and I really don't wanna to have to pull this thing out again. So let's hope that I can get a good pattern on both sides of these gears and then we'll be good to go because I'm not wanting to pull this thing out again. See. All right, wow, pattern looks good. All right, man, I don't know how well you guys can see, but uh, the pattern right there, really nice. Let's take a look up here. This pattern here, it's a little bit on the high side towards the outside, but then you look right here. That thing looks beautiful. So let's take a look at some of the other pieces. Oh yeah, look at that. That's nice. Oh yeah, look at that right there, that's beautiful. All right, I think that's good enough for me. All right, maybe I'll spin around a few more times just to double check. You see I'm putting resistance with one hand, this hand here against that ring gear to try to help it spread out a little bit more. 
And then when it goes the other way, put resistance going the other direction. You want to get the drive side and the coast side to put a good pattern. Yeah. Boy, that's good. You see how there's just a little bit of, let's see if I can, so right here, you see how there's a little bit of yellow left on that lip. So you can tell that the ring gear isn't making contact with the outer portion. And then there's a little yellow on the far inside there to tell you that it's not digging in too deep. Both those look good. Now let's look at the back side here. Boy, that's really nice. You see, it's just at the very tip is where it starts to lose the ring gear contact. And then right here, you see it's not making contact right on the edges. Yeah, that is good. All right, here's a better spot. Look at that. That is beautiful. Let's look at the back side. Yeah, it's good enough for me. Nice, all right, let's get this thing put back together. All right guys, here's the Spartan locker that I'm gonna be installing. I'm not gonna do a how-to on this because there's a few out there already that are pretty good and it's pretty straightforward. You see you've got the carrier there and you just slide this little doohickey into there. Those little splines meet up with the axle shaft. You put the C-clip on the outside. Then you've got this piece with the little teeth on the other side that locks up against it. And then you're gonna have this retaining pin that holds them together. Now inside here, See these little metal pieces here? You pop these out, there's little spring-loaded pins right here that help keep every, everything held together in place. So I'll show you this install, but like I said, it's pretty straightforward. No need to do like a full how-to on it. Well, we'll see how loud it is on the road. All right, guys, the rear end is done. Ready to put the uh, cover back on and uh, fill it up with fluid and take it for a test drive. I wanted to show you, there's a little bit more play in here than I thought there would be. I'm moving the uh, passenger side axle right now. I'm told these are super noisy. I think that's part of the noise that people are hearing. The other thing is obviously this little spring-loaded portion, this pushes in and then allows it to ratchet free when you're making a turn. I'm told that you're supposed to uh, stay off the throttle when you're going into a turn so that it can click, 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 click the one side free. If you stay on the throttle, I guess the back end kind of whips out on you. So it's something to keep in mind. Now I wanted to put a temperature sending unit down here on the bottom. There were two reasons for that. The first was gonna be so that I could pull that out and then drain the fluid without having to pull the whole cover off. That would be nice. The second reason is because when you're breaking these in, it's best to take a temperature reading so that you can see if it's getting too hot, that usually means that your preload is a little bit too tight on those bearings and the bearings are heating up. The other thing is you want them to go through hot and cool cycles. So you want to get up to temperature, uh, 15 minute drives, give or take, and then you want to let it cool down and then you want to take it on another drive and so on. And I thought it'd be really handy to have a temperature gauge for that. Now, what I didn't think about was that, first of all, the, the axle although it's probably grounded uh, I would need to do a grounding strap because it's a ground resistance uh, sending unit the other thing is I want to take this cover off as soon as I'm done with the 500 miles so that I can take a look at the wear pattern on the gears and it's really not that big of a deal to take this cover off uh, the third reason though why I'm not gonna do it is because I don't have one of those little bungs to weld in here and that is because I used the last one on my Dodge transmission so I'm just gonna install it without the temperature thing and I'll just use my little laser beep beep temperature uh, reader there and I'll keep an eye on it. Plus, after I put about 500 miles on it, I really can set it and forget it. If it makes it 500 miles, pull the cover off, put new fluid in there and it's good through all that, it's gonna be good. Now, I am going to fill this up with uh, O'Reilly full synthetic, I think it's a 75W90 oil for the first 500 miles and then after that, I go to the Royal Purple 75140 all right guys the gears are installed ready to take it off for a test drive got my partner in crime over here you ready to go ted he's ready i'm gonna put the camera underneath on uh, that same drive shaft shot 
drive shaft shot that I uh, used in the last one so we can try and see if we can hear any of the uh, clickety clackety noises and see if there's any whirring or anything like that. So let's get to it. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this episode. It was getting a little bit long while I was editing it. I think it was at like 32 minutes. And so I decided that I would take a couple of things that I finished on this and I'm going to make like a mini episode that I'll edit the next day or two and then release immediately. If you're watching this on Saturday, the day that I'm releasing it, I am in the desert right now beating the living hell out of this thing. So wish me luck. Hopefully nothing breaks. If you want to watch little clips and pictures a little bit more real time, you can... Uh, find my Instagram account. It's AC the car guy on Instagram. I'll be posting just some little snippets of our little misadventures out there. Uh, otherwise, wait a couple days. I'll have the video out where I finish all the little tiny teeny things that I had to get done. And then a week from today, hopefully that video will be out pretty much the finale, beating the living hell out of it in the desert. So see you guys in a couple days, hopefully. And then a couple days after that.